how are you all doing anyway? I don't know if there's anyone on here. I did say, I did say it would be 10 o'clock. Yeah, good old Luke Littler. Thanks very much for that. Yeah. What a run he made. How good is that kid? He is some player. And I don't know what he's going to do in the Premier League. What do you guys think he's going to, you reckon he's going to turn up, play the game? When I, that first set, oh my God, I thought he was absolutely rubbish because he he clearly a 16-year-old is going to get nervous. But then, yeah, absolutely no nerves after that. He was just absolutely flying. But, yeah, the tournament wasn't going to be a very good one for me, apart from that. And then uh, Luke Littler comes through the pack. I, I remember thinking when I was betting him 60-1 to and 80-1 to pre-tournament little bet, I thought he could get a good run here. But then it completely opened up to him. It completely just, the draw just went, yeah, Gary's gone. You've got all of the top players are just getting knocked out after knocked out. And there you go. Yeah, maybe he will do well in the Prem. So hard to know. Like, I hope he does. The only very loose connection I have with some, knowing something about this is when uh, there was a lad, local lad from Wyndham, and he won the Youth Championship. Must be about 2000 and, I don't know, 2014, I guess. He won the World Youth, beat Gerwin in the final. And then after that, he went drinking with all the darts players. He turned pro. And then, you know, it all went a bit wrong. James Hubbard, his name was. You can look at him beating, um, go on YouTube, look at him beating uh, Van Gerwin. He's an incredible player. And he still plays county. And I think he still plays now and then. He... He played in some local tournaments that I used to play in. Uh, he's a very good player, but it just didn't go his way. I just hope that it doesn't go that way for, for Luke Lilla. I don't think it will. He looks too good um, to be able to do that, but we will see. Music Fury. Yeah, I, I fancy Fury. Uh, boxing for me is my big sport, and I just feel that with someone that is that tall that good at moving, that now he punches really that hard. For me, I just, yeah, there's, there's, I think he beats up Usyk, if I'm honest. I think it's, I, I, I've backed Fury pretty much the whole time, really, when he's been, when he's been doing stuff. And for me, he's top quality. What do you guys think? Do you think Fury, I know people will look at his last, his last few fights and they'll be like, I don't know. I'm not sure. You know, against Ngannou, I think we'll find out. Ngannou is actually a proper, a proper fighter, but but we'll see. I mean, it's it's going to be. Uh, I think I, I will when the fight's nearer the time. I think I will have a little bit of money on Fury. I think get out boxing. Yeah, I, I can get the the Ngannou fight worries you. I, you just never know with Fury if he's sort of turned up in his top condition. I I just feel that. It's just, it's just too good for anyone. No one that size, six foot seven, should be able to move like he does. He doesn't really have any flaws. His chin's unbelievable. Even if, even if Usyk really hurts him, I just think he gets up, and I think he just that long left hand. I don't know. I, yeah, for me, Fury, Fury beats Usyk. Although Usyk is top quality, as we know, I just don't think he's big enough. I, you know, a lot of people ask me about uh, AJ, and I thought. AJ's probably not good enough to beat him, but he's big enough. And it just never worked out like that. Yeah, a lot of people say that about boxing, but you know what? Over the years, boxing has been miles the best for me in terms of making money. You know, I go back to the Cow's Aggie days. That's how old I am. I remember I must be about 16, something like that, when he was fighting people like Jeff Lacey, and you, you would get genuinely get even money on Joe Calzaghe, who was undefeated at the time, to beat Jeff Lacey, this new, sort of Tyson-esque um, fighter who was, who was knocking everyone out and he was doing it. But even money, I remember boxing's let me bet everything I've ever had and just win. You know, it, like 
one thing I'd like today, I was going to go through the horses with you guys, if I can sh get get this uh, set up right. Um, uh, with the horses, I just don't have that sort of... I like horses, and I think, you know, I can bet 20, 30, 40 quid, whatever, but I don't feel that strongly. Like, I, like I bet four yesterday, two won. One was at even money, one was at two to one, and the other two, the same system that I use, and they both run like rubbish, and it was just... Whereas with boxing, like with Amir Khan, I mean, I I had everything I could get, any bit of money in 2008, I could get on him to beat Barrera because it was so obvious to me, even money again. And I I dumped on nearly sort of three grand, which for a student, most of that was overdraft money. That wasn't, I didn't have any money. And then he goes and wins, but I could never do that for a horse. I mean, I, I bet 800 on a horse once before, and that ran like absolute, it came last, it came sixth of six, six. So boxing's always been my sport. It, just nowadays, I feel they're much better with the actual, um, the odds with it. So if I look through the markets, I did find one the other day, which I had a few quid on, which was Hergovic to win inside two rounds. I think that was even money, was it even money? Yeah, and I, I had a few quid on that and that was, Incredible, he, he, he won it within about a minute and a half, and the other guy didn't want to be there. So, I, yeah, a lot of people say boxing the odds are rubbish, but I find boxing, even now, still the best to bet on uh, by far. If I could just have betting with that, with boxing, I would I would strictly my face, and then I can go through some of the, the horses that I've done today. Is there anything you guys fancy? Is there um, any... Any tips you want to show here? I've, I've backed a few. Um, again, very sort of small stakes. I'm finding that recently. If, if there's not um, any, there's hardly any racing, so it's it's, it's tough to, to do that. Um, okay, cool. Okay, if you're going to listen. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Then just chatting. I, I don't even really know what I'm doing here at all so it's a bit of a when when i record videos it's quite easy like there comes a little thing in the corner showing my video and then i can show the um what i'm watching on my um screen and then i can just talk through it there like i suppose i could do this without um without me being there but i'm just going to fiddle with a few settings and see what i can come up with um yeah, it's, but can everyone hear me okay? Is it is it something that I don't even know what the stream's like because uh, the actual internet up here is a bit a bit guff, but we'll see. But all I really wanted to do was basically talk gambling like we have, you know, the whole Luke Littler thing. You know, I hadn't been having the greatest of month. I, I find Christmas and New Year's just before that. It's all a bit of a mess, really, because I try and take quite a bit of time off. And then oh, when I sort of come back, there's sometimes, you know, yesterday, was it yesterday? No, the day before, there was one meeting on at half four. I just couldn't even be bothered. So I was just looking through and I was looking through some of the darts markets. But like today, at least today, there is some some horses that they look all right. Like like I say, yesterday was frustrating. Um, so where's the first one I did? So the first race today that, I um I looked at and did last night it was Ivec, I think it was um spoken it how it said it's twelve ten unseated last time it looked like hell it, the run of the race was it was sort of heavy ground and run it wasn't pushed at all a few of the ones in front of uh, Ivec were getting pushed and I just thought it was a strange one a, a horse sort of got in front of it just before jumping the the fence it sort of jumped it okay but then unseated the rider and previously to that run a, a decent little race um run a decent little race and ran a good speed rating i'm a big fan of these speed ratings uh just to show and it ran a 74 which is is miles better than than anything else had run in this race i just feel we're getting a price on, on a horse that Potentially, I thought it was going to be maybe around four to one. I think I got eight to one yesterday. There was a big, there'll be a big rig rule four, um, but it probably works out around 13 to two, I can imagine, even with that. I just thought that's probably 12 10 at Musselburgh today. It's 
had a small, I think, uh, 15 quid on it, nothing major. Um, and I put it into some small little bets. I don't know. Looking at the rest of the field, they just, it, yeah, it's not something that really interested me that much. Um, so that was my first one of the day. Uh, second one, character testing. As you can see, I haven't up, I haven't um, refreshed my screen since last night. But six to four, it's all right. I had a little, I had as much as I could on it around two point six six. Um, and then if I refresh this screen, you'll see it's massively odds on now. The trouble I'm finding with the horses, which is most frustrating, is because I have very few betting accounts here. You can see here, best price four to six, mainly eight to 13. There's been no non-runners, so I wouldn't back it at eight to 13. But I have backed it for a very small amount at six to four last night. I can't remember what I had on it, 25 quid, I think, and I got a little bit of on bet for six quid at, at 2.66. But like I just said, I'm finding it really frustrating how because I keep losing accounts. I mean, I, I've never had my own accounts for a long time, but biggest part of the problem I'm having at the minute is just oh, only like one or two betting accounts will have good odds. So it's normally Paddy Power, William Hill, Betfred, these these group here that have the best odds. So sometimes it might be two to one with that, and then six to four the rest, and I'm just like I hate taking such a big um lower odds it just it really annoys me and bet there's hardly any market money in the markets the night before there's not even really much money in the markets now um and it's just even if i fancy something at the minute it just feels like i'm getting frustrated with with what i can put my money on and, and yeah there's not a lot you can really do about that but that's just how it is um yeah so that was that's the next one um I, I thought again I, I don't like sort of at six to four I'd have probably said had you know might be worth a small bet but eight to 13 it is much better than the rest of the horses in the race ran a good race last time we don't know what it's going to do at Subble that's the that's the gamble I'm having at six to four how's it going to run at Subble but um yeah was worth a bet and this horse Gronzi in the 120 at Musselburgh again um I thought Ran a good race. Where was it? Um, ran a good race last time. It seems to run one good one, one average one, one good one, and one average one. When maybe we're we're due at an average one, but you know if it ever ever works like that. Um, and I just thought a six runner field. I thought nine to four was was decent ish price. That yeah, coming again seven to four. I don't know if I got any money. I got seven quid on it overnight at 3.4. So I got a little bit of value there. And I've had, I think I had 15 quid on it at nine to four. It might be worth a small bet again um, at nine, uh, whatever it is now. Um, I think it's the best horse in the race. Wherever I, I, I thought, you know, I think how I am going to be here. It was about three to one yesterday. I thought that was a, a little bit strange. I, I think jackpot was four to one, if I remember, and yeah, just thought I am going to be not much. There's a few in here. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be that interested. Robin's Town again. You're looking back, you've got to look back in form and hoping it can try. So I've had a bit of money for it. I don't know what price it was yesterday, but I, I thought Gronzi was a good bet. It probably still is a decent bet. Seven to four. Um, yeah, I've just again put it in small accumulator bets. Um, just in case we can get a few winners and the last one was six o'clock tonight tiger beetle i think it's called i think oh it's still 50 it hasn't lost its price i think i've had 20 15 quid on that as a single uh, i haven't been betting much each way recently um i thought that wasn't too bad i can get run again a good um decent time last time out where is it yeah yeah run decent decent race last time out it's not the hot, strongest of races and last time it had run over i think it was nine and a half furlongs it was down in the weights a little bit but it ran another seven and a half this last race was over eight and a half at wolverhampton i believe Around a 79, it should be up there, it should be, I just thought it'd be a bit short, I thought again it might be about 5 to 1, a little bit of value there, but again I don't really massively fancy anything today, I was going to look at a couple of bad 
odds on races today. There's this one and the 135. Uh, I don't mind the little, the small little four runners. I, I find I have, I do okay on them. So yeah, it's, and this race I haven't looked at yet. It's something I'm going to look at because they start fairly early today, but I don't think that tw the first one I've got is 12, 10. So I was going to do a live stream for um, however, however long you guys wanted to chat for um, and then go from there, really. What well, What is it you guys sort of, bet on most do you you guys bet horses boxing cricket i i used to bet everything but nowadays i'm trying to be a bit more specific um but it's it's so hard to i find the markets are a lot more um a lot more efficient than they used to be and i think that's a bit of a bit of a problem but there's still money to be made out there. You know, like last month was good for me. It was decent. And this month started slow, but with, with the darts, if you can find an upcomer, up and comer, someone like Luke Littler, you'll be fine. But it's, it's a funny game gambling. It, it always, for me, it, I just, the thing I find the hardest is the losing. I know that sounds ridiculous, but over the years I've lost so many big bets and I've lost <laughs> time and again, but I'm still not great with taking the with taking the losses. It's weird. I, I, this, if there's something I could do, it would be so good if I could just learn how to It really would make a massive difference to me. I'm going to see if I can add add something here, guys, just to see it, because I'm, all I can see is a very small screen of the love tree at the minute, but let's see. So that's that. Just need to put. I really don't know how to do that. All this technology, guys, it has got me. Where would I? Video capture device, maybe. No, I'm gonna have to figure this out another time. Doesn't really matter. Um this one but i'll have to learn how to learn how to do that yeah so what is it you guys like to bet on because i find gamblers are funny like they i was always told that you should try and bet on as many different sports as you can as often as you can and then add in you know if you can do a bit of match betting if you can do a bit of arbitrage whatever you can do that's what you should do but Realistically, for me, I've always, boxing was my big thing. I would, I would dabble in others, you know, tennis, rugby, I used to bet quite heavily in parts, but it's so hard to be spread out across, you know, 20 sports, like I was told, that it feels like horse racing was the one that I've always tried to sort of perfect if I could. But again, I, I'm, if I'm honest, I'm, I'm playing the numbers a lot more than than I am anything else. Like I'm I'm technically doing speed ratings and I'm I'm looking at you know times of races and sectionals and things like that, which definitely help. But it, they they only go so far. You know you've got so many rare variables in horse racing. You know you've got ground, you've got trip, you've got you know what track you're at. Is it left handed, right handed? You know the fences. You've got jumps. It's it's a bit of a minefield and because I've been doing it for so long, you, you would think over nearly 20 years, I would have perfected it, but it feels like I'm sort of, I haven't. I, and I think that's what frustrates me more than anything is, you know, I put so much time and effort into it and yet I still find it incredibly hard. One thing I do like betting on now more so is, especially with the split in golf, like the live 
um, golf, I find that it's a little bit less, I think it's a little bit more difficult, uh, less difficult than it has been over the years because you've got such a big split of such good players, especially now Rahm's gone. I find the less um, competitive sports are, the easier it is to bet on. So, you know, I go back to the glory days of Tiger Woods and it's, it's a bit embarrassing to think that how easy it was back then to be a professional gambler because, you know, I might bet 200 quid on Woods at 9-2 to two to win a, win a little a normal tour PGA Tour and he goes and wins by five shots and he never looks in doubt. And, and it was really a case of how much bottle have you got because, you know, he's not going to win them all, but he did win a lot. And, and even if you're back at three to one, which I did, majors he might be four to one sometimes. And one of my biggest wins, well, it wasn't one of my biggest, but it was one of the sort of strangest wins was when I backed him around, again, 2009, something like that, for him to win two tournaments back to back. And lo and behold, he won the first one and he was three shots clear in, in the last major PGA Championship, I think it was. And um, then Wai Yang came and, and, and blitzed through the field and beat him. But luckily, I, I laid some of them off because um, the double was seven to one. And I think, I think I had something ridiculous. I don't know what I was doing. I think I had like seven, eight hundred quid on him to win the double. I backed him to win both tournaments individually. And yeah, like even though he didn't win them both, Paddy Power actually paid out on the win because he was three shots clear. Paddy Power on the last day, if I still had that account, guys, I would love to show you. I could probably find something on the internet saying that they had paid out on the Sunday because he was three shots clear and the odds, he was so short and he couldn't lose from that thing. And I remember speaking to my mate, oh, what an absolute Muppet mistake this was. I remember speaking to him saying, what do you reckon? Is, is he going to win? He goes, he'll never in a million years lose this tournament. And he had some money on Woods as well. He was going to win a fair few hundred quid. And I, but I was going to win quite a lot more. And I just, I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I trust him. And luckily, I trusted my gut. And I, and I laid him for about you know, 1,500 quid. At such short odds. I was only going to have to pay about 300 quid out. But my God, it was an absolute nightmare. <laughs> He lost. I think if I'd have won, I'd think I'd have won another, probably another three grand. But like I say, I'm going back through the years and it was so much easier there. Like, am I only a Khan fight? Pacquiao. I remember backing him to beat De La Hoya at 10 to 3. I mean, give me 10 to 3 on Pacquiao to beat De La Hoya now. I probably don't need to gamble much more anymore. But it's, yeah, it's, it's much tougher now, I find. So I'm sort of interested to see what everyone else, how else everyone else bets and how do they go around doing it all really because it's just a it can be a bit of a minefield if you like this uh, live stream guys can you please like it that might get a few more people up in here and uh, while I still have no idea um, how to add myself my picture to this and I'm definitely going to have to do some YouTubing as it seems a bit weird not even seeing my face but as long as everyone else is happy with me rambling I'm happy to do so let's have a little look at the 225 at Ludlow cool these are some very low speed ratings these first three we have got of my favourite races, guys. Bad odds on races. Unfortunately, this is turned into a seven-runner race, which isn't ideal. But we love an eight-runner race. And bad each-way race. You can probably just bet blind, really, on these sort of races. Um, because the bookies will have done their homework on the whole field and they've priced the bet accordingly, the market accordingly. Um so let's have a look. Love Tree is the favourite. Oh, it's last race. was not much of a speed rating. What we've got here, what's it say? Readily saw off rear posing Davis at Cotwell's seven and a half lengths on her debut. Open to improvement. Should make a bold bid to defy the penalty. Hey, what we've got here, okay. Seven and a half length winner easily. 
Yeah, right, fair enough. Yeah, you don't, speed writing's no good with that because you, you don't know what else they they had in the the tank. Let's have a look at Spurial Orc. Yeah, not such an easy. So, fifteen length bird plugged on last. Yeah, probably not going to be. Even though it's higher, one point higher in the speed rating, so it's probably run a faster time. It's not a. I mean, not a bit. If there was three three places. You might have a cheeky each way, but no. Oh, okay, so Dame of Cotswolds, seven lengths behind, seven and a half lengths behind it in that last race. Both off the same weights now. No, so get seven pounds. That could be a. That could be a, it's something I'd probably go to Sport in Life and have a little watch of that race. Have a little look, see. Oh, it's going to make me sign in. I'll leave it. But so I might look at that race later, see if there was anything in it. But yeah, seven pound swing. It's not really a race I'm that excited about. Four to seven, seven runners now. I might leave that. Might not. Might not bother. Because it's going to be sod's law that. You're going to pick one, it's going to come a third. I did one the other day. I don't normally bet fairly big each way, but I thought I'll do 40 each way, not on bigger prices anyway, eight to one. And obviously, it came, it was looking like I was easily going to get second, and then somehow it came fourth at the end. And I was just like, oh, trying to keep your money in this day and age is sometimes much harder than it used to be. You know, with a race like this, it's spirit could, could nab it for a second you just don't know and a lot of the time i'm trying to make this whole thing more efficient you know looking through races and things like that but the trouble is the quicker you try and do it the more problems you can encounter and then you're just losing money again so let's have a look at the one thirty-five. okay see so we've just and again a lot of races there aren't a lot there's a lot of form so it's you know, I'd love to look at this race properly, but we've just got not we've got hardly anything there. We've got one speed rating over hurdles of forty, which is rubbish. Um, but the other, you know, if we look at it quickly. There will just be nothing there to really go on. There might be some national hunt platform, maybe. But again, what do we take on that? You know, you need information, and if there's no no information, what can you do? Yeah, in regards to match betting, it's uh, once you've done all the offers, I mean, they do a lot of other offers and they'll just pop up like my friend's account. He was showing me the other day, he's got a Coral account and he was showing me, they, they were giving him like, once all the sign up offers have been done, he got an offer of £10 if you bet £10 on the Saturday racing, then also if you bet on a horse for £5 or more, you get a £5 in-play racing bet. So I was like, the one bet bookmaker on a Saturday, I, after you've done all your sign-up offers, which are amazing, you've got now potential to make another 13 quid, just guaranteed. I, I, the trouble is when I try and teach this to people, it seems like they either get a bit too overwhelmed by it, they don't quite understand what's going on, or it's a case of they can't be bothered to do it because it's, you know, 13 quid, 12 quid, whatever. It's not worth doing. But I think the thing is, you know, that's just one bookmaker. I'm sure some of the other, you know, William Hill, they'll offer some really good offers on the day. You might have to bet 10 quid on something to get 10 quid. It's again, it's another, essentially another sign-up offer. So I would just do those. And also, you know, as much as people can get addicted to the um, the casino, if the, some of the casino offers are really good, I'm probably not the best person to talk about this with, just because I haven't had my own account for probably seven, eight, yeah, probably seven or eight years. 
So I'm either using the exchange or I sometimes go into bookies and do that, or I might have a, a new account with some very dodgy bookmaker. Um, so I don't know anymore. Sometimes I'll look and I'll see these offers and I'll be like, oh, I wish I could have, <laughs> wish I could have kept my, um, my account open all these years but it was never going to happen so that would be my yeah that would be my opinion on that slayers n that's that's what i would say how are you, how are you doing with the match betting are you finding it finding it good are you enjoying it so let's have a look at this uh layers Lindsay. so yeah we've got a lot of flat form here again looks an absolute shocking flat horse and then went to the all weather another crap run and then Lizzy, Limsy, didn't run that well. 29 lengths beaten last time out. Okay, so it's pretty much, but that's why it's 22 to one in a free run of an event. Um, so you got a, bit, a, bit, a little bit of form there. It doesn't mean that flat form doesn't always translate into the actual jumps. And the hurdle form. See here we've got yeah you know, flat form, good flat form here though. A loose elucidate. Amy Murphy has come over from France, I'm assuming. Yeah, so not bad. It was good heavy. It's running heavy. We nearly won a little maiden over there. Don't know what the times would have been. It's got two entries, always like that. Yeah, I mean Again, a lot of the time we're gambling, though. That's, you know, and that's, you know, I am a gambler, but you need, you sort of want more, you want more information. A race like this, you would have to say, yeah, going to be favourite running at Kempton, you know, class two hurdle, uh, but did get beat 14 lengths, but ran a 40. Yeah, so it's going to be, going to be favourite. And then you've got quite a, quite a tough little race, actually, a little four runner. So, hate tough races. I like it when there's two runners that could probably win, the other eight are crap, and then we're good. But yeah, this is not, this is not one of them. It's so funny with Henderson and Nichols, sometimes they'll, they'll pull up and then next time they'll win by 20 lengths. And it's a bit like, as much as speed ratings are great, they don't account for, you know, what the trainers know. So yeah, again, I'm not gonna, not gonna bet in that, that race. Hope this is showing you uh, the sort of ways I go through. Starting in December, and I am up over one k. That is awesome. Completed all the sign up offers. Just trying to figure out what the next steps are. Yeah, I mean that's brilliant. Are you now putting that one k into a sort of pot to maybe gamble with, like what I do, or are you? Is it just you want to try and make as many, um, just much guaranteed money as possible? Because one grand, that's really, really good. That's a, a brilliant start. Like I said, I, I as long as you don't get addicted to the casino, I would do some of them. But unfortunately, I've got some horrible stories of people that have lost stupid money on those casinos. So I wouldn't, yeah, it's not something I was, I would sort of do. I would probably try and say avoid them. I, I would try and, you know, it depends how risk averse you are. I mean, you wanted to be a gambler and make sort of a few hundred quid a month extra on the side of the job, or you know, I would look into betting. I, betting is brilliant. Like when you find you, when you find value. I mean, if you've got time to look through races and you've got time to look through betting markets and you've got time, sometimes there there still are really good, really good value out there. It's just it is that losing that, that people don't like. You know, people will happily put money in the stock market and put money into banks, um, giving you low, low uh, percentages. But really, it's it's no it's no real difference um, to to the stock market. Really, you just you, you get a lot. You can get quicker rewards, and yeah, if you're good, then you can make quite a bit more than you could off a small bankroll um, there. So after guaranteed profits, really don't really want to gamble. No, that's fair enough. No, I, I would say it's good. I, I hope people will come to this channel with with both that idea of just guaranteeing extra money. I think things are getting quite tight now. You know, I know a fair few people have lost their jobs. You know, the economy is in the toilet. 
it's a case of extra any extra money you know is a bonus and i think so my advice after all that little rambling my advice to you slayers rn slayers m would be to like i just said earlier like can't remember what account it was my friend had but try and use them like if there is a five pound bet to to win a five pound uh, to get a five pound free bet i would genuinely do that and i i would put the five pound on something, lay it, try and take a, a 30p loss, 20p loss, whatever it is, then use that five pound to again, guarantee four pound 20 or whatever you can. And yeah, some people will say it's only four quid, but, but they're going to be 10 pound ones. They're going to be 21 ones. I would just keep doing them. I, I would try and set up as many accounts as you can. You obviously know what you're doing uh, with that. There are constantly new bookmakers coming up. I mean, that's the only thing that's really kept me going is that I'll have an account in my name for maybe six months and then it's gone. I used Bet, is it Bet MGM recently and I made quite a lot of money from them for, for six months. I was like, bloody hell, I can't believe they're going to let me do it. And then obviously banned from them because they were, there were some great odds. So I, I would do that. Just keep, I hope that helps. Yeah. Just keep nicking little bits of money here, there and everywhere. Grandstand jockey. How much do you need to be a professional? It's a good question. So when I first started, it was I was seventeen uh, when I first started, and with Stan James, and it was I think I had about fiver. I think they let you deposit a fiver now. I think it's minimum ten of them, and I was learning by betting very small, and then it just turned into I got very lucky with one. I put a pound on something in ninety to one in a football. It was something like Balak to score first, Germany to win. 2-1 and something else yeah and it was 90 to 1 and I couldn't believe it and that was unfortunately for me in, in that sense that was where I was hooked so I got that 90 quid and then I was betting two quid one. and actually funny enough right at that time I had a two pound hacker on genuinely 22 tennis matches and I got 21 of them right I mean they're all massively odds on but it was still going to pay because I had a couple of big price ones there Justin N. Arden let me down for 20 or grand and I was just like you mother yeah looking back you know, I could have probably laid that for, for some good profit but to your question again I'm rambling grandstand jockey how much do you need to be a professional I don't know I don't bet that much and I, I normally look for odds rather than you know I, I'm not someone that I used to I'm not someone now that bets sort of 500 even money and 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 just do that and, and 100 here and 100 there. I normally sort of bet in the 10s and 20s and 30s. How much would my bankroll need to be? Probably not very much. It, it really does depend. It's, it's such a hard question to answer because everyone's so different. Some people will absolutely love betting big, maybe because there are so many different ways you could play. You could technically, I could just look at boxing bet big like I used to and I probably only need to do a couple of days I probably only need to do it maybe five days a month doing that but the risk reward is huge the risk is much bigger the older I've got the the less I like to risk you know all these stories of me betting I mean I bet 12 grand once on Carl Froch it wasn't even my money absolute nightmare um I was I, I wouldn't even say I was addicted. I was just uh, quite a big gambler. Whereas now, if I bet hundred quid, that's quite a big quite a big bet for me now. So I could I could make sort of it's not big money. If anyone's here thinking I make you know stupid money and I'm rich, it's it's really not like that. But I do make good you know I make an income from it, and I live completely how I want to from it, and I can do as little as much as I want. The last month wasn't great, but I still made a grand profit. And it's my bankroll would have, I don't know, how much would you need? I don't know. I suppose I have got sort of 1700 quid in Betfair, which helps with laying and backing, you know, with the darts this week. That made it much easier to do that. So I'd say you could start with maybe two grand, maybe less. I, yeah. I mean, like with Slayers said earlier, you know, he's made a grand on, you could, that's how I would say to people, you know, if you want to sort of go professional and give it a go, you could build up so a grand like Slayers N has done there and then go with that and then see how you get on. Right? 
If you are just starting though, I would probably paper trade a lot. My One of my friends, very good friends in London, he, he loves a paper trade and, and we paper traded speed ratings for four or five months before we started really properly betting on them and, and they were too good to miss. So yeah, I think you could start with anything. It depends how good you are. You, you know, you're going to have some gamblers that are just so good and they could pick horses here, they could pick tennis players here and then like I probably used to be really quite good. Um, now I've been a bit more lax with it. I'm probably not quite as sharp and I want to spend less time doing it. Um, I probably need a bit more, ironically, now that I'm doing it. But yeah, it's how long is a piece of string, to be honest. But is anyone sort of contemplate, contemplating doing it? There's a guy I knew locally who saved up 50 grand to do this. And I didn't really know him. I, did. I knew he was doing it, but I didn't really know him. I had no advice, really, for someone like that. They're clearly going to be betting a lot bigger than I am. And in six months, the whole lot had gone. Once you started ch- once he started chasing, that was it. And then back to the grind, back to, I think it took him about 12 years to save up that money. So it just puts it into perspective, doesn't it? You know, as much as some people might come on here and laugh at me and say, you don't make enough or, you know, there's not an income, I don't know. I, I, I haven't worked for 13 years, I think it is now, maybe more. And I enjoy it. You know, the biggest, I have a few problems. One of my problems is being asked to do it. Like, already this being the first stream, I actually quite enjoy talking about gambling because it's, it can be a bit insular and you can, you know, I don't know anyone that does it. You know, this is part of the problem I have is I don't have anyone to talk to. I'm doing this every day and I'm just, you know, looking through horses, looking through vet, but, but I don't have really anyone to, to chat through. And I was hoping this YouTube channel might bring together more people um, just, yeah, chatting about it because I enjoy it. I love gambling. It's just, you know, having to make a living doing it is not always the most fun, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, what is your opinion, Grandstand Jockey? What is your opinion on the white paper? Do UK bookies abuse their powers, holding winnings when you win? Should we copy Australia with minimum bet? I mean, it, I don't really know what you mean by the white paper. You might have to chuck something in the chat um, by doing that. I think UK bookies, they do abuse their powers. I think a lot of companies will abuse any kind of power they have just by, you know, because they can. And it's so frustrating because, you know, even, you know, getting banned, you know, in 2008, I was getting banned by all these bookmakers. I think that's, I think that's awful, really. I I think it's all well and good. They make hundreds of thousands, millions, billions on people losing. But then the few people that don't even, like me, that don't even make silly money, are restricted, can't use their their bets. It's frustrating for me. It's really, really, um, really, really frustrating. And a minimum bet would be brilliant. Is is that officially happened in Australia? I know they were talking about it a long time ago. Has that actually been a thing? Because that'd be brilliant. That's all I'd want. Even if it was, I don't even want, you know, and I'm not even talking just for me. I'm talking for everybody, you know, even if it was, minimum 10 15 quid i don't think i'm being greedy there but i can have a 10 or 15 quid on anything i want i'm not saying it's just when you can't use their site anymore it just makes it so much harder for the few that win the very few that win to use it it's just yeah nightmare uh slayers in i started with 2k but that was because i wanted to get through the sign up offers quickly so you need to be able to lay the odds you won't lose the 2k if you do things correctly yeah there you go that's Great, great answer. Start with 2K. I mean, if, if someone can save up 2K, brilliant. Probably do it on less, if I'm honest, but yeah, that's good. The government white paper on affordability checks. I haven't actually read it. If I'm completely honest, I've. it makes me so angry reading anything to do with affordability checks and things like that that I don't, I haven't read it yet. I'll have to, I'll definitely have to read it and I'll, I'll make make a point of, of reading that. Um, soon to see what um yeah what that's all about what um what do you guys think 
in terms of these live streams, do you think they're they're worth doing? If I could sort of run through, you know, certain bets or certain like if I, I like a boxing bet, I, I'd quite like to maybe run it through with you guys or like just chatting gambling. I'm enjoying just you know with you guys. It's something none of my friends really do. Either they've had a problem with gambling or they don't like losing or they feel it's a case of, you know, they don't want to do it, which I get. I'm the only person I've known. There's one other guy locally, but he's still working full time um, and doesn't want to give up that income, which is fair enough. Um, I just hate being told what to do by a boss. So it's a case of, I'm very happy doing what I'm doing. It's just I've got to try and probably be, got to sit down more and and do it properly. Um, but yeah. So uh, have you had any luck with multi accounting? Um, no, not really. I, I was reading about it before, sort of worried a little bit about what might happen with all that. Um, much the sort of trust element of it is a bit of a worry and I don't know um, how that, how it works technically. I don't know, you know, how how you get the funds in there, how you get the funds out. But um, yeah, any way I can set up new accounts would be amazing, but I haven't really had much luck in, in looking into that. Yeah, no, oh, good. I'm glad that, you know, these live streams could be just good for just a chat, you know, just a gambling chat, you know, questions, answers, you know, I, I have been doing this a long time, you know, 20 odd years, really, it's probably coming up to 21 years. So as much as some people might, you know, I'll get trolls saying, you know, you're not a proper professional gambler, you're not this, you're not that. Well, the reality is I, I can prove, you know, my friends have seen me gamble. I mean, I've lost 800 quid betting uh, France to win. Uh, not France, Brazil to win the World Cup when I was young. Like I, I've been through, I've placed numerous bets on every sport, tennis, you know, I've got some great stories with it. And the thing is, because most people don't gamble that I know really, they're not really interested, which is it's fine. But finding sort of people that are interested in that, I think is is good. You know, I, I want to I want to do some int interviews. Um, there's a few people you guys probably know, Flat Cat Camera, Black Cap Callum and Connor 500. They seem to be two guys, or uh, English guys that, that gamble. I, I quite like to get them on the channel, interview them, see what their story is and things like that. And, and just sort of generating a bit of a community with it because like I say, I'm a bit of a lone wolf and it's fine. It, you know, I can make it work, but I, I'd rather have, you know, chats with people and, and live streams and, you know, just have fun with it really. Um, grandstand jockey betfair liquidity is in big decline has the exchange lost its edge i do horses one pound every box in play which sport do you have your biggest edge interesting that's cool i'd like to know a bit more about you backing every um horse in play how, how does that work in, in what time i do i know what you mean about liquidity it, you know, it's so funny when I can remember when Betfair first started out and there was absolutely no money in the markets. My friend was doing some crazy arms, sort of backing something at three to one and laying off at sort of six to four and for small stakes, but making a fair few quid doing it because no one was on Betfair. And then it became massive and then they got greedy, as every business does, the disgusting uh, powers that be. Uh, there's a good bet book on Betfair actually, I can't remember what it's called, but it's about the guys that uh, owned it and yeah, greed, disgusting, the pre premier charge and all that, all, all fun and games. But um, my biggest thing definitely, and I'd still say it now, is boxing. I mean, boxing and golf was, was the two I used to bet my biggest sums on always. And I still feel, you know, I, I've got some videos from... 2009 and I, and I did a, I had a YouTube account with my friends and my it was all about predicting uh boxing and it, I've got um Kessler to uh, get beaten by Andre Ward there's some big prices there there's an Amir Khan fight to beat Telnik and I got all five of them right and I all had decent um money on all five of them and it was just a case of 
that was always been my thing. Boxing, I find any sport that's one on one for me, it's just so much simpler to look through the the form, to look through the odds. I could come up with stuff, you know, and I would really look into it. Like it might take me six, seven hours. Some fights might take me days, and I will really go to hone in. And then, because I'm so confident, because I've been looking into something with only two real variables. You don't have to worry about weather. You don't have to worry about the ring size. You don't have to worry about stuff. The only time I've had an absolute calamity was when I got caught and it was it was a cheat. Uh, it was Miguel Cotto. I had a lot of money on him to beat Margarito. And I was, I was certain Cotto was going to smash him to pieces. And then he got beaten up and, and he took the knee. Cotto took the knee and said, I can't do this. I want to, you know, I want to be here with my, my kids. And we found out that Margarito was cheating. So technically... Uh, they had a rematch and Cotto won easily. So that was one of my biggest um, one uh, bets where I feel, yeah, that's the only very few times I've been cheated. That was one of them. And, and unfortunately, there's nothing you can do after that. Um, but but boxing and golf, for me, mainly boxing is definitely my biggest edge. I'd even still say now, if there was boxing on every day, I, I could be quite rich. But, you know, it's hard when there's bookmakers don't really like boxing. Um, and, yeah. I'd still say that's my biggest edge. Uh, Slayers. Uh, my brother lives at another address, so going to use his details. I've got him to sign up with Monzo account. I will fund the card and then just pay him a monthly fee to use his details. Yeah, I think that makes perfect sense. Um, if you could, you know, obviously your brother can set up as many accounts in his name as possible, and he will obviously be doing the uh, the. Uh, uh, betting and the the match betting brilliant yeah i think if you can do that all fair play to you i think that's that's brilliant i mean why gamble when you can guarantee it do you know what i mean like there's some of those offers you know some of those 25 pound offers 50 pound off, they're incredible but weirdly as much as i do slag off the bookmakers and they're good you know those offers are amazing you know if they took them all away i don't think gambling would be quite where it is um now so you know they're not all bad you know they do give you free it is free money i don't care what anyone says you know it's free money so there you go so i'm really glad you're doing that and that's that's awesome best stuff media like the stream awesome thanks thanks very much for that best stuff media appreciate that yeah i, I didn't know I, I wanted to do this when i was doing it months ago but again obviously i still can't, I don't have the technical ability to work out what I've done here with or I can't get my uh, face on there and but I think the general chat side of it I think is 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 cool you know we can we can just chat about whatever it is you know I wanted to sort of show you guys sort of what I do in the morning um obviously I got up at nine today so it's not like I, I have to get up very early walk into the office and then how do I on a normal day what would i look at but like i say i've just shown you those four um, horses that i've had a bet on god knows what's going to happen with them today they could all lose um but i, I did have three out of three the other day which small prices but as a treble that was okay um and i just wanted to yeah like i say have a chat and see what questions you know i've never been asked questions i never but there's a lot of uh, weird information in this head of mine after because I love it, you know, it's it's a little bit easier. You know, there's some people that just want to just want to talk, just want to give you the tips and, and be done. But for me, you know, I'd like people to sort of understand, you know, why do I bet this? Why would I do this? What What's the reason behind all of these situations? And I think that's what it's all about, really. Best stuff, me, yeah. There's no match deposits in Australia. Is there not? Why? I did not know that. That's interesting. So if that's is it in America? Some of them are absolutely huge. So I assumed it was all over the all over the world that everyone got these um, free bets. That's interesting. Yeah, it's sort of. I I do love the Aussies. I absolutely love the Aussies. The, the honesty that comes out when I watch the Aussie boxing and. They're just taking the mick out of their haircuts. They're just, they're brutal. And if they're talking about economics, I love economics. I love sort of learning about that. And if it's an Aussie, straight to the point. I mean, my God, 
it's how I am, but I don't even know, you know, I'd love to swear every five seconds on, on this stream, but I'm not even sure I'm allowed. YouTube, I did a Grand National video and it got 10,000 views in a day, which I was really chuffed out. And then they took it off because um, I violated some rules. And all it was is I put the Randox Grand National and, and then I appealed it after the race and my horse came third at 28 to one and no one got to see it. I think that would have blown up quite heavily. And uh, yeah, they said, oh, sorry, it was our mistake. And I just thought, you, oh. So yeah, uh, fun and games with that. Grandstand jockey, I lost 3K on David Hay versus Belly first fight. Have you ever had experience where the bets won and the bookmakers refused or pay or suspended your account? That David Hay fight, you know, I remember so many people asking me and I, you will be able to tell me better than me. I've got a funny feeling it was very short odds. That's the only thing that saved me on that. I like Tony Bailey. I think he's a good fighter. But David Hay, at certain points, it was just a destructive machine. So the only thing, and this is the only thing that saves me a lot of the time, is the odds. I'm assuming, I've got a funny thing, he was like one to three or something, or maybe one to four. That's the only thing that saved me. If David Hay was even money, I'd have lumped, I'd have lumped on like you had. I'd have probably had two, three K on him and, and I fancied him. But luckily I got saved by the odds. Um, but that's brutal. Oh, sorry to hear about that. Have you ever had an experience where bets won and the bookmakers refused to pay or suspended your account? I had, you might have heard of Football Index. Um, it was a, a trading sort of site years ago that went bust. Um, and I had a nightmare getting money out of there when I'd won a little bit. I did get it out in the end, um, but there was, oh, I had to jump through some serious hoops, which I was not a fan of. Um, uh, have I had any experiences where they've suspended my account? If I'm honest, over the 20 years, I don't think I've had one problem. I've had money stolen in terms of, I've had, I had a, I think it was 106 bet or something. So when, when you've been gambling as long as I have, and you need to set up bookmakers with from different countries, you will have had these weird situations whereby I had I won a good bet on that. It was a tennis bet. I think I won about fourteen hundred quid. And I had sort of, I think I had fifteen hundred quid in this account, and they just went bust. And the website just went something like one hundred invalid or something. And that was the that I tried to find a way of, of contacting them. I tried a way of potentially suing them, but it was just sort of it just they sort of disappeared. So that's the only time I've ever had a problem. Um, I've. I've had Sporting Bet um, try and suspend the payment, which I legitimately we won three grand. Uh, I just had to jump through some hoops there. That just took three or four months. And I had Poker Stars. I came 12th in the um, Sunday Millions. This is about four years ago. And I won $6,000 from a free ticket, funnily enough. I a free ticket, then I won a Sunday Millions ticket. And I came 12 out of 12,800 people and won 6,000. They refused to pay me. It took me seven months of constant back and forth and I threatened to sue them and then they, they paid me. Um, so yeah, I've had a few instances, but as a rule, never really. I, I had one time where it was Genting bet. I think they closed probably about a year ago. I had a bet, it was about 150 quid on the Conservatives to win something. I can't remember what it was. And because they were shutting down their, their sports betting account, they um, they let me uh, have it as a winner. I was like, are you serious? So as much as bet, you know, bookies can be looked upon as scummy, I've had some cool, interesting situations whereby they have sort of done something pretty good. Uh, Slay as in, I was worried that this was a fake YouTube channel when I saw the old videos being uploaded. That's why I was excited to see a live stream to see that as a legit person behind it. Yeah, it's a weird one with this YouTube channel because, like I said, I had a few problems with YouTube taking my videos out and I was just getting no views on my old videos um, and they restricted three of them. So I was, so I just didn't do it for about a year. Um, downloaded some of the old videos and I didn't really want them to go to waste because to set up a channel from scratch would just be an absolute nightmare you know I've got uh, five viewers right now which is great but if I'd said it from scratch doing a live stream I'm gonna get none I can't imagine I get any views anything like that so yeah that's the reason and I've still got some old videos that I probably will put up but I, I am looking to do some new stuff um, 
yeah, match betting, arbitrage, things like that. Um, and just maybe I'd like to interview people, but again, it's my technical difficulties that I, I don't really know how to do it. I, I'm going to get in contact with a couple of them. Um, the guys, Connor 500 and uh, Black Cat Callum and maybe Carnberry, if I can get him on, something like that would be good. Um, probably won't come on, but we'll see. The stuff media, we want the knowledge. Good. Well, yeah, it's there. The, the one thing I have got is a lot of years in, in the industry. You know, some people might not say it's much use, but I think it can be. Um, the stuff media, illegal to advertise it for a while. But now it's banned, I believe. What's that? I'm getting a bit confused. Uh, best stuff media, salt of the earth, honest, honest Aussie blokes. Yeah, I love it. I do when I'm listening to economics and I'm hearing them talk. And there's, you know, the state of the situation in Australia with the housing market and, and various other things. I love it. It's, it's what it's all about. You've got to be honest. It really is what it's about, in my opinion. You know, it's all well and good. People sort of bigging stuff up but honesty is a, is a big thing brandstone jockey david hay was wonderful yeah I, I remember the second fight he was still i'm pretty sure he's still favorite but my friend backed uh Bellew and i said well, i don't know it's up to you but it's probably not something i would have done and then yeah he's laughing in my face me being the professional gambler with his 200 pound winnings fair enough carl bristow do you have a separate job or simply live off gambling income yeah Simply live off gambling income. Um, my biggest issue is I'm a lazy mother and I could do really quite well, in my opinion, you know, because I do know a lot about darts, I do know a lot about golf, a lot about boxing. But I don't know, I feel for me, life isn't really about working, even though I love gambling, I really do, and love predicting stuff. It's still work, really. Um, and I still enjoy it as much as I used to. It's just yeah that's but no it is my yeah and i have no, no other income nothing um just pay the bills and everything from my gambling and like i say my only problem is that i'm just so lazy with it and could do five days a week maybe six days a week and, and, and make a lot but i'd rather do maybe I'd, I'd love to do one day a week if i'm honest one big whip day make you make 250 and, and be done but you know, we'll see. It's yeah. Carl Bristow, many years ago I was up I was 3k up on the sky bet through repeated over goals, but it's nice. Withdrew the money in one go and Sky Bet gave me a fifty pound free bet to go to me bet again. No way. I love Sky Bet. I, I mean I lost my account probably twelve years ago, but God, I looked on a boxing the other day and the bets I would have had if I had a Sky Bet account and I would have won the over one eighties market and things like that. It, that's it's the thing that frustrates me more than anything is that I just don't have the option to a lot of bets that everyone else will have. Um, and sometimes I look, I think that's ridiculous odds. I, I can't believe they're giving that. And they, yeah, they do give out some great free bets as well. Brandstand Jockey, how do you find the long and sociable hours? Do you have days off or is it an every day an opportunity? To be honest, like I just mentioned, I'm so lazy that I'll get up late. Like Some days I'll get up at half nine, ten, and... I'll scour the markets and I might I might even just do maybe two, three hours in a day and then go and either play darts with my mates or go chill out, just read a book or something. So yeah, I, I'm not someone that, that sits here for for twelve hour days and six day weeks. I've got mates that, that work sort of labour jobs and and they'll at the moment they're doing six I never see them because they're doing sort of six days, twelve hour, fourteen hour day. It's not my style. I'll never be like that. I just can't be bothered. It for me, if I could work as little as possible, that's what I would do. You know, even even the YouTube stuff, I don't want it to take up very much time because I just if it does, then again we're we're getting into realms of what's it worth, you know, I've never made anything off YouTube and I've probably spent, you know, 800 hours overall learning how to do it all and, and doing it over the years you know so is it worth me doing it probably not so yeah and that's why i want to try a lot of things i want to try these live streams i want to try interviewing people but if it doesn't work it's fair enough you know I, I just don't want to put too many hours into something that might not make me anything it's not like i want to make money from it it just would make my life easier if i could make a few quid 
um, doing something else because I don't really want to go working for anyone. I'm very happy betting on everything and doing all that. Uh, best of me media, maybe get interviewed first to get exposure and get a look at their setup. Yeah, maybe, maybe I've never had anyone contact me. Um, but if, yeah, if someone wanted to interview me, I'd happily do an interview with someone and explain, you know, over the years what's happened. Slayers then, how old are you? If you don't mind me asking, I would like to not have to work anymore as well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that was the plan years ago was to um, maybe potentially earn enough to then just buy a house outright and do that. But it, it didn't quite, I've always done well, never had any big losses. Uh, well, I've had big losses, but I've never, like, I've always been fine. It's just, it is hard to, the biggest problem I have is when you're getting restricted by every account and then say I want a really big bet on something. i give you an example. A few years ago, I went into, uh, everyone goes, oh, go into shops and, and you can bet whatever you want there until they know who you are. Well, frustrating me, I um, went in, I really fancied a horse and I'd already had about 20 quid on it each way at five to two, got into there, it was nine to four and I was like, can I, about 10 minutes before, no, probably eight minutes before the off and that's what I've been told to do, you know, bet at, before the off and 250 pounds and, and they ummed and ah, they sort of bugged about with it for a while and then took maybe three four minutes ringing and stuff and they said oh we can only offer you five pound each way i was like really i haven't got, really got time now to put the bet on so i went on bet fair and i had a little bit of money on it and obviously that horse went and won by 10 lengths and won easily and, and the difference between you know i was going to try and get about 300 quid each way i really thought it was, should have been massive favorite um and instead i won nothing it was just such a gut punch and it's like that's the problem with gambling for me more than anything is that you know things like that happen and you need them to go well because you don't get many opportunities like that so it's yeah that's a frustrating thing um but maybe it's doing things differently to how i used to maybe betting every day and betting smaller at bigger odds might be the way to play it you know i used to love big big prices so that might be how I play it and then try and build up a bankroll enough to, yeah, to maybe not have to work anymore. And I don't really see this so much as work. Not really. It is, but it's different. Um, and my age, sorry, 37. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Are we on to 38? Um, best stuff media. How many 180s have you got? Well, yeah, I used to play. A lot of people don't know this, but I used to buy a lot of darts and I, Actually, at one stage, I was sort of playing seven hours a day, and I've played a fair few professionals as well. Um, so my best total in one day was 19. I hit one, 19. I even practice now and then. I hit six uh, yesterday just in practice as a mess around. But I, I watched Luke Glitter and Luke Humphreys, and I was just thinking, how are you so consistent? I mean, I could average 100 back in the day. I've won little local tournaments, and I've... I played a lot of lo local league stuff, and I've had a lot of that, hundred averages. But to to do like what Luke Humphreys did in that semi final, that hundred nine average. I mean, I just don't know how they do that. This the game is so flipping hard. Um, but yeah, so quite a few one eighties over my lifetime. Uh, Grandstand jockey, how did it take? How did it take you to turn profitable? Did you serve the typical losing apprenticeship? No. You know what, like I mentioned, I think the only reason I really got into gambling, because it's not really in my family, mum never did it, dad might have dabbled in it, none of my friends were really interested, and at 17, I don't know quite why I got into it, yeah, it was Stan James, I don't even think Stan James is still around anymore, but um, no, I didn't really, and, and I found this with poker as well, I didn't really go through that losing apprenticeship, I, I was betting Probably a lot of very small amounts, losing, losing little bits. But then I'd have a say that ninety pound win with Balak to score and two one, whatever it was, um, and that sort of bankrolled me to go for. It. And then I started betting two pound and, and three pound. And actually, I think the first month, so I, I technically after that ninety quid win, I think I won seventy quid. And then after that, I was making three, four, five hundred each time. So I, I actually don't think I went through any real losing runs. I, I was never someone to win silly money. So even when I was through uni, 
you know, there's a lot of mums I make 700, 800,000, you know, I was always there or thereabouts. So I just, yeah, always made, managed to make profit. But I think back in those days, I was working a lot more at that. That's it. I was enjoying it more. I was, I knew everything about tennis. I knew everything about Formula One. I was just on it back then, whereas I'm not anymore. I, I'm a bit of a sort of washed up gambler at 37. I, I, I've got to really get back into sort of doing it, I suppose. And, and as much as I'm still good at boxing and, and horse racing and stuff, it, Sometimes you do feel that I need to know more. Um, but at the same time, I want to be economical and I don't want to spend too much time doing it. So it's, yeah, a bit of a, bit of a mess, really. Carl Bristow, boxing in plays are great, especially a UK prospect against someone from foreign shores, always overhyped and often beaten by the unknown guy. At great odds, yeah. I've had some weird situations in play. I had a guy in play at seven to two. I had quite a, I just kept betting every round and I was 25 quid and I was like, and then by the sort of seventh, the other guy's back went out and he had to pull out and, yeah, made quite a bit doing that. I had another one where someone's eye socket had clearly gone. I could I saw it and the other guy was absolutely huge odds. He was something like 12 to 1. So even with my limited account, I had £5, £7. I was trying to mount it up and I managed to probably get 50 quid on somehow. Uh, they kept restricting me to 4 quid and 5 quid. But because a new round came and I think I made 500 quid from that and... Sadly, it was a local guy, um, and yeah, but you sometimes watching him play is absolutely amazing. It really is. But any sport, you know, I was looking at watching the Everton game yesterday. I wasn't going to bet on it, but I just thought there were potential uh, bets in that game. Slayers in uh, Iron 35, so similar age. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of experience for someone not too old uh, in this game, just because I started so early, you know. I know a lot of people that have been doing it, but they've only been doing it. They're my age and they've only been doing it a couple of years. Um, so, yeah, it's got a lot of a lot of history with it all. Um, guys, it's been brilliant. I haven't really done what I was going to do, um, but I think we've been on here an hour and ten, maybe a bit longer. I think I started it earlier. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to end it now. Brilliant talking to you guys. I really appreciate it. Um, would have is this sort of time maybe a bit earlier on a Friday any good for you guys would this be something I could do more regularly or is that not something um is possible uh, what else we got here I'd like to learn more about in place yeah in place is great if you, again annoyingly my accounts are so sort of restricted that in play can still be a pain in the, the ass but yeah I, I would actually if I could do most of my bets they would be in play and that that's another part of the problem with all this is you know, I can't tell someone what to do when it's in play. You, know, you sort of need to be watching it together. My best bet was Martin Rogan versus Skelton. I got eight to one on Rogan. Oh, I had a fantastic time with uh, with Rogan. Absolutely loved betting Martin Rogan. He had a real taxi taxi driver all the way up. He was beating everyone, wasn't he? I think he took on. He got a hot, absolutely walloped by Fury, if I remember. Um, yeah, I had some good wins on Rogan as well. That's brilliant. Eight to one to beat Skelton. That is mental. Cool. Okay. Well, Saturdays would be better. Yeah. Okay. I could probably do a Saturday um, morning. Or maybe I, I'll. Yeah. I'll. Um, I'll see, and then I'll put a community post and see when's best for you guys. I might be able to do a Saturday one. But thanks very much, guys. Really appreciate you turning up and. Uh, and watching i hope you enjoyed it uh, i've really enjoyed it actually it's been really nice chatting to you guys um and yeah talking gambling um i will do some more videos soon so yeah watch out like and subscribe to the uh, get that so you get the notifications from all but yeah great chatting guys um and take care have a good day good luck Cheers, guys.